Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're doing some work with high speed pulse and the effects the, and, and applications for using high speed pulse TIG on steel. What I've got here is just a piece of 11 gauge, 8 inch thick cold ruled steel. That's a roughly uh, 3 millimeters. And I'm going to run a bead down the edge, right next to the edge, where the edge of the bead is on the edge of the material. Now, you can do this without pulse, obviously but it's just a little bit easier with pulse. With pulse at 33 pulses a second, um, it's, it will stick better. It won't try to wick over, wander over, melt, roll over the edge. Now, if this was some kind of a blade of expensive, hardenable tool and die material and any extra dilution that you had by melting over uh, farther was gonna cause problems, it might be beneficial to be able to really confine the bead, and that's kind of what pulse does. It will allow you to place a bead shape a bead a little bit better, just a little bit better than without pulse. All right, to set the pulse, the pulse settings on, uh, on this HTP unit, first let me turn the pulse off. Okay, so the pulse is off. The reason I have it set to 150 amps, I really only need about 100 or less for doing this tiny uh, little precision buildup on this steel, but when you, when you set pulse rates at 33 background current, you wind up with a, sometimes about half of the actual current that you think you're going to get. So you have to set the machine higher when you're using pulse oftentimes. So I'm going to turn the pulse on and the first thing that comes up is pulse frequency and while that is flashing I can adjust it and I'm going to set it to 33 and I press it twice and I get pulse duration which is the amount of time it stays at peak pulse and then to set the background current, I come over here and press function twice. And that's, when that's flashing, when the eye low is fa flashing, I can set my 33% background current. And I'm done. I'm ready to weld. Now you hear the 33 pulses a second, but the actual uh, puddle and arc looks like a lot lower pulse rate. And that's just, a, that's just a phenomenon of the camera shutter speed and whatnot. What I hope you can see here, though, is a I'm able to to um, place that bead very precisely and the edge of the bead kind of stays right on the edge of the metal. It doesn't want to roll over and melt it off too much. It allows me to stack a nice high profile bead up there right on the edge without it uh, melting that edge over. It stays where I put it. It's, it allows for a little bit more control than you would have without pulse and that's important. Another example of practical application is, would be replacing metal that had been accidentally machined off. Like for instance, this, this, this chamfer, this bevel right here on this edge, let's say that was an accident and that was meant not to be there and it needed to be a sharp edge for compliance to the drawing or something like that. Being able to, or pulsing at 33 pulses a second will let me, will let me shape that bead and make a nice high crown bead where it'll machine off at, at, a, at a nice sharp corner. It'll control it and keep it from fanning out, wicking out, melting all the way over the corners and wandering and everything. It, it makes a difference. You would think that high speed pulse, pulsing that fast would be like no pulse at all. It's, it's not, not like no pulse at all. It has an effect. It's not like night and day. It just has an effect. And so for build, for build up like this, like on, on this, would, this would be also very similar to tool and die repair where something is worn and you're, you are building it back. A lot of times with a hardenable rod and it will be machined back off and reheat treated, you can precisely place a bead using pulse better than you can without pulse. That's been my experience. Now I'm using a 332nd electrode here and it is not perfectly sharpened. It's got some, you know, a weird shape on it. It's been used a little while. Still working okay. And again, I'm able to, by backing up just a little bit while I dab a little rod in there, backing up over the puddle and barely scooting the puddle ahead using kind of minimal amperage to flow and to watch it wet into the metal, I'm able to stack a kind of a high crowned bead on there, which sometimes you want to do because if I want this thing to be machined off to a sharp corner, I want a high crowned bead. So using the pulse at 33, the rule of 33 just lets me have a little bit more control and precision. Again, rule of 33, 33 pulses a second, 33% on time, 33% background current. There are other numbers that work well too, but it's a really good starting point. 
even experimenting with rates of 50 to 150 pulses per second have have a lot of benefit. I've seen some benefit on injection molding repair and tool and die repair, things like that. So thanks for watching and if you want to learn more about HTP TIG welders, go to usaweld.com or call this 800 number.